Okie dokie. Hi. Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for Monday, December 20th, 27th, 2021. This is the time of the week when we get together and talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Dan. I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com or our distributors. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython-dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. Typically, this meeting is on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, United States Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, U.S., except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. If the meeting time is changed, you'll see a notices on Discord. If you want to get notified about changes to the meeting, we can add you to the Circuit Pythonistas Discord role. So just ask. There's also a calendar available that we try to keep updated if you'd like to subscribe to that. That's a Google Calendar. This meeting is recorded. We record audio from the voice channel and video of the text channel, which is a trend, the trend, the uh, a Discord window. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you are still welcome to participate. This meeting will be posted on YouTube in video form, and the audio is re released as a bot as a podcast. If you find this podcast is not available on your favorite podcast service, please let us know. And there's a notes document. Uh, that accompanies the meeting and the recording. If you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, uh, leave stuff in the document and we'll read it off during the meeting. So we'll uh, start with um, community news. You can go to the, um, the, the notes doc. I'm going to paste it in here so you can take a look at it. That's in, that's in, it's in the chat, in the CircuitPython dev channel. So. Um, we are honored today to have um, uh, Lady Ada here in the voice channel and also uh, Phil PT from Adafruit. Uh, Phil is doing the um, CircuitPython newsletter, the Python or microcontrollers uh, newsletter this week. Um, Phil, would you like to read the community news? Yeah, um, the document is not set to share, it looks like, maybe. Really? Okay, uh, hold on a second. Let yeah. me get, get the right link. Yeah, I will... Um, there we go. I'll keep the, war the, the room going so there's no dead air while, we're, while you're doing this. Let me hit refresh on the dock. I'm still getting access denied. I think you got to set it to link anyone can view but let me see if this one oh there we go great okay community news um this is uh kind of on me this week so i'll tell you the plan and this is going to be in the newsletter that i'm working on so the plan and uh i i said this joke sort of in our meeting before this that we have with our team everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face that was a mike tyson quote um so my plan was like, hey, like Anne's been doing amazing on the newsletter. The team's been going. Um, I uh, purposely have been diverted on helping Lady Ada and our team run Adafruit all during this time from COVID that's still not gone to um, supply chain issues. You name it. Everything has been happening in the last 18 months. So the plan was, hey, give Anne a break. I have, I always try to have some writing time the last couple weeks of the year to catch up on stuff, be reflective, and thank you notes to people, you name it. I try to do that. And of course, uh, Omicron, which is I think one of the Decepticons or Dinobots or whatever, decides to show up and uh, everything is getting shifted and moved. The Adafruit team is doing fine. Um, I figured I would let everyone um, no, we don't do um, a weekly update on Ask an Engineer and, and, and Show and Tell um, because a lot is the same as far as like everyone's vaccinated. We have um, paid time off for anyone who needs it for taking care of others or for COVID testing. And uh, we have a whole thing on our site, adafruit.com slash open safely. And we also on brand, um, be as transparent about everything as we can because a lot of people they're, they're trying to get through this and they're trying to run their own companies and there's not a lot of good information and certainly 
Um, a lot of folks are reluctant to share what they're doing and protocols and all that, but we've been trying to um, set a good example and say, here's what we're all about. Um, a lot of companies, a lot of people have emailed like, hey, can I check out your handbook and heard you do pay time off for charity or I heard you do this, I heard you do that. So that's been one of uh, the things that we wanted to do. And over the last 18 months or so, you know, there's been a few times where we're like, oh, you know what, I really want to stop doing show and tell or this, this is, we're, we're so busy and we're so exhausted. Um, maybe we should, we should take a little bit of a, a break or something. Um, but we also know how important a lot of these things are to a lot of you out there and, and certainly the community. So we're just going to keep doing this and we're going to do this for as long as we're, uh, we're alive. <laughs> and for the newsletter, the, the plan was give Anna a break and, um, you know, kind of have like a wrap up. So I don't have as much time as I thought I would, but I'm still going to do, I, I have a bunch of things that I, I, I did manage to get done for the newsletter. So some of it is going to be how we come up with names of things. Some of it is just some stories about how Adafruit works. Um, how we um, how we build things together as a community because I the the genesis of of Circuit Python and Katniss here who coined the phrase code plus community um, it really is the the way we steer this ship it's 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 always something that I think people can point to and say this community listens to each other they're elevating each other and they're bringing other people in. And that's how we're, we're growing it. So um, if you haven't already, go to Adafruit Daily, sign up for the newsletter. We have over 9,000 people. Um, I put a little note in why we do things that seem very different and counterintuitive. Adafruit Daily is a separate site, not connected to Adafruit store account. Um, there's all these things that we do just to show and demonstrate that we're um, not going to spam. We're not going to harvest emails. We're not going to do anything like that. We don't even want something confusing where someone like, oh, maybe I signed up for a newsletter. So um, we want to be really respectful of everyone. And I, I think that's one of the things that have helped carry us all the way to here is we, we try not to let you all down. Um, so with all that being said, uh, this week, however, uh, no show and tell, no ask an engineer, because uh, we are going to take off that little bit of time. Um, we are going to recharge. Uh, Lady Ada is working on a ton of hardware, and we decided well, I think we could do a few small videos during the week of the last week of December. Um, but if, if we can feed Lady Ada um, either dumplings or um, usually some type of uh, taste, tasty high carb thing, uh, engineering and products pop out. So that's the plan this week. Um, so a little bit of a, of a community news that's all over the place, but um, Mostly I wanted to say thank you to everyone here for being so supportive of the team uh, each and every week for doing these meetings. Uh, when you look at the last, I think, CircuitPython newsletter we started in 2016, um, it was. Um, you can look back and see all the progress and all the, the things that we've been able to do together. So I just wanted to say thanks to everyone. And uh, hopefully, uh, this wave will uh, go away as fast as it came upon us, and I hope to return to doing more newsletters and a lot of the other things. And, uh, Our Lady Ada is here too. Um, Lamore, do you have any end of year things you want to say before we both uh, bounce to the next thing? Um, well, we did a lot of stuff this year, which is pretty cool. Um, we've got new chipsets like the ESP32-S2. Uh, Scott um, has had a lot of fun working on um, you know, native Bluetooth support, which has been uh, really good. It means that we can support more chips that don't have USB but do have Bluetooth. And there's also, of course, uh, more chipsets coming out with uh, BLE. Um, there's also the, the native Raspberry Pi support, which has been super fun. Um, to watch, kind of interesting to see, you know, how can we use Circuit Python as a as a non OS programming language? Um, kind of reminds me of the Apple Twos uh, that you know I grew up with, where you know you you start up and it's like, hi, I'm in Apple Basic, and you can you can code it immediately. There's no Finder or anything. Um, but I think uh, a lot of it has been more support. I think we're finally getting to a lot of stuff that's been on our list for a while. Uh, we did a lot of low power stuff um, this year. We did, um, we're doing asynchronous 
uh, support. We did RP2040 support. So like, you know, it, it, it's a lot of stuff got done. And um, it's it's been cool to see, especially with, you know, boards like based on the RP2040, um, having that native HID support that we you know cared about very early on became a, a very powerful factor in, in people wanting to pick up CircuitPython and use it. Um, so I think, you know, there's sometimes we, we add stuff to CircuitPython support and we're like, oh, this is sort of fun and we don't really think about it. But then years later, it, it kind of becomes the most um, important thing. And, um, you know, a lot of that is based on uh, tax work with Tina USB that allowed us to have, uh, you know, a very uh, consistent USB experience. Um, you know, for me, a lot of it is learning from, you know, doing Arduino for 15 years. What are some of the things I wish that we had done earlier in, in Arduino development, language development, kind of bringing all those lessons um, into CircuitPython, which I think has been successful. And I can't wait for people to learn from CircuitPython and uh, bring those lessons into other languages. So um, really good stuff, a really uh, strong community, a lot of contributions, a lot of new boards. Um, I think we have, what, like 265 uh, supported boards in CircuitPython, which is great. And it's really easy to add more. There's like a new one or two added every week. Um, that's good. It means there's there's a lot more buy-in from other companies, a lot of people. People want to see um, CircuitPython run on their hardware. They see how easy it is. Um, it's one of the easiest languages to to add support for. We even have guides on how to do it. And we have a you know beautiful download page. And I think that's... Um, that's awesome. It's also supporting the, the greater ecosystem of maker companies and open source hardware companies. Um, people can design hardware and then they focus on the hardware. They don't have to think as much about the software because that's, um, you know, that's that's taken care of basically for them. And then hopefully they contribute guides, tutorials or libraries, um, you know, what have you. And, um, you yeah, know, I'm starting to see it more more companies releasing hardware and saying CircuitPython is supported. Um, and you can get first class support uh, for free. And that's that's what we're all about, doing open source hardware and making it easier for people to use CircuitPython, um, doing more and more documentation, uh, more and more libraries, um, just uh, just having a really good experience overall. I think uh, CircuitPython is, is surprisingly powerful and it's always fun to see people have that joy when they um, use CircuitPython to see like, okay, here's how you know, electronics can can work. It can work in a way that's easy um, and maintainable and um, fun. That's my that's my yearly update. Wow. Okay. Well worth it. Does anyone have any questions for Lamore and I before we uh, bounce on to the the next? Go on. Well, I guess I just want to say I'm still learning how easy Circuit Python is. And that's a weird thing to feel after you've been using software for a couple of years. Um, it, yeah, I, I love it. I'm so happy to be working with it. So thank you both. Yeah, I think um, one of the observations that I see a lot is, <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird to say, is everyone is expecting the worst out of all things technology related. And when they start using CircuitPython, they, they almost have to get over it. It's just like, oh, wow, that was easier than I thought. Oh, wow, I didn't have to download an ID. Oh, wow, this is uh, not some weird, terrible thing. And it's it's kind of a shame because we're all just kind of beaten down with like what what has happened to us. But it's also very refreshing um, that it, it just means that this is possible. And I, and I hope folks will look at um, CircuitPython and MicroPython and a lot of the things that Adafruit's worked on and a lot of things that Lamar's worked on, a lot of things our team worked on, and said, well, maybe there's other things that can be easy and fun and inclusive. And maybe things don't have to be as terrible. And maybe things, um, it's not all doom and gloom. And, uh, you know, I think it's hard to be an optimist sometimes, but when you, when you use technology and you can see the impact it has on people, um, all the things with AT makers and Bill's work, uh, we just posted up a a video not too long ago that Bill made with uh, Elsa. And you could see people that are, they're able to communicate because of some code that we thought was gonna be interesting um, for like keyboards or something. And you could see how life-changing it is. And then you could see people running businesses for the first time and they don't have to do all the same things they, that we had to 
um, and kind of uh, suffer through a lot of stuff. So, anyways, I agree with you, 100%. Jeff, I have to remember too that things are. It, sometimes I I go I fall into old habits when I like go and look at a project I want to do, and I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be terrible. And it's like, oh wait a second, it's actually this is really easy, and I have to remember that we made things easy, and uh, it's because things were terrible and hard before doesn't. They always have to be. All right. Well, Dan. Okay. I'm going to hand, I'm hand the, the, the mic back to you. DJ, away. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Phil and Lamore. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. See you later and uh, subscribe to the newsletter. Yep. Definitely. All right, buddy. And I will talk about that in just a minute in more detail. Okie dokie. So we'll go on with a couple of items of community news. It's a light news week. Um, uh, but a couple of interesting things happened. Uh, Mew, um, the first item is that Mew 1.1.0 uh, beta 7 is out. That fixes a number of problems running on several different platforms. And um, please go ahead and go to code with uh, Dot .mu and uh, download the latest version and try it out and report any problems that you've been ha having. And then also to note is that um, the release candidates for CircuitPython 7.1.0 are now out. Um, let me put a timestamp in about that. Uh, RC.0 came out on December 23rd and we made a couple of minor changes for RC.1. And uh, if nothing comes up in the next day or two, we will release RC.1 as 7.1.0 final. And then we'll be able to start having uh, 7.2.0 alphas and betas, which we can only have one series of alphas and betas at a time, and that's been a bit of a problem. So watch out for that in soon, we hope. All right, thanks very much. And as Phil mentioned about the newsletter, um, If you want to contribute, you can find the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter. It's really the Python and Microcontrollers Newsletter. It has more than CircuitPython in it. The archives are at adafruitdaily.com, and you can subscribe. And you will the subscription is only for that. You don't have to worry about being put on some other product mailing list or anything like that. If you want to send, if you want to contribute something to the CircuitPython Newsletter, anything that you see that's of interest. Uh, send it to cpnews at adafruit.com or mention it in Discord or tag us on Twitter. Um, any of those mechanisms are fine for getting stuff to us. So now we'll move on to the next section, which is the state of CircuitPython and the CircuitPython libraries and the uh, Blinka libraries. Uh, I tried the statistics here. For some reason, the run last night failed. There was GitHub was having some trouble around midnight last night. And so this is uh, Saturday midnight, Sunday morning's data, as opposed to Sunday uh, midnight's data. But not a lot happened at yesterday anyway, so it's not a problem. So overall, we had 65 pull requests merged, even during this holiday time. There were 15 authors, and of note, there were some new authors that we haven't seen before, maybe from this week or last week. Smank Usors, Danny Staple, Ezen010212, uh, Drone CZ, and Tim Hawes. Thank you very much for joining the community and contributing things. We had 11 reviewers of those pull requests, and we had 31 issues. Um, 31 issues closed by 10 people and 10 opened by 10 people. So it's nice to see a bunch of uh, net gain in the closed issues. Um, in the CircuitPython core, let me take another timestamp. Uh, we had 19 pull requests merged with eight authors and six reviewers. We have 15 open pull requests. A bunch of those are on hold or um, are drafts, so uh, it does not reflect a lot of pending work necessarily. There were 10 issues closed by five people and four issues opened by four people. And right now we have 462 open issues. 
Uh, a lot of those are long-term issues, enhancement requests and the like, and for s fixing in seven in the seven XX series, there are 15 open issues, and for fixing in 800, there are um, 10 open issues. And we've got uh, a few other various kinds of issues, 17 library issues, seven support issues, and which issue that we need to uh, figure out where it belongs. But we're, so we're in good shape. So uh, Katni, can you go ahead and tell us about the CircuitPython libraries? I can. Uh, so this section is about all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras. Uh, we had 45 pull requests merged, which is excellent. Uh, we are not in the middle of a sweep, so that is uh, that high number is actually a series of uh, non-related PRs, or some of them may have been related, but um, it was not uh, intentional. Uh, we had nine authors and eight reviewers. The oldest merged pull request was 525 days, which is amazing to see. We are getting through a lot of the older PRs, uh, leaving us with wait for it, 37 open pull requests, which is significantly down. And the oldest open pull request is 470 days. And that is significant because I believe previous to this, the oldest pull request was in the 700s. Uh, so we are, we are finally catching up and I'm very excited about this. Uh, we had 20 issues closed by five people and six opened by six people, leaving us 629 open issues. 242 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, uh, including open issues and open pull requests. If you're interested in reviewing, check out the open pull requests and see what is there if something interests you. Um, if you have the hardware, give it a test. If you don't, you can look at the code for syntax, etc. And just leave a note that you did that. And once you've done that a few times and you feel comfortable with it, uh, we can talk about upgrading you to the review team. Um, if you're looking to contribute on the code side, check out the open issues. If you're new to everything, good first issue is a great place to start. Uh, otherwise, there's bug or enhancement. Um, find something that interests you. Let us know that you're working on it. And uh, we're available to help you both on Discord and also there is a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub available in the Adafruit Learn system. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, there are no new libraries, but there is a short list of updated libraries, which I will not read off. And uh, an early hug report, uh, which there will be another one later, um, for Foamy Guy, uh, who is going through the older pull requests right now and getting caught up. And like I said, um, that's a really important thing, something we really haven't had the cycles to do. And uh, Foamy Guy stepped up and is taking care of that. And that is a really excellent thing. And that's what we've got. OK, thank you, Katni. Okay, um, since uh, Melissa is not here this week, Jeff, would you would you like to read the Blinkist section? Sure, why not? Uh, just uh, give me a second. So Blinka is a library that brings CircuitPython compatibility to MicroPython, uh, single board computers, and a lot of other fun little stuff like USB dongles. So you can run uh, the same program on your host computer. And in the last week, there was one pull request merged from Foamy Guy, reviewed by Melissa. There are five open pull requests within Adafruit Blinka and related repositories. Issues-wise, there was one issue closed by one person and no new issues. There are 67 open issues, and you can track the ones in Adafruit Blinka by going to github.com slash Adafruit slash Adafruit underscore Blinka slash issues. We know people are using the software because within the past month, there were 14,268 downloads from PyWheels, and the number of supported boards uh, is 85, which probably does not fully count the uh, MicroPython variants where you could run it. And that's what's up with Blinka. OK, thank you very much, Jeff. OK, we'll move on to Hug Reports. Um, Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. Um, We'll read this in order. I'll start, and then we'll go alphabetically after that. Um, some people are text only, and I'll just read their contributions. Um, we really welcome Hug Reports. Hug Reports are the opposite of bug reports. Uh, they, they really uh, acknowledge people doing great work. OK, so um, I'll start. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to Jeff, who did some temporary fixes um, 
a few days ago to CircuitPython builds that were breaking because of some underlying stuff that was breaking, and he quickly made some patches so that we could continue uh, uh, making sure that the pull requests run through to completion and make sure that they're correct. Uh, we were able to revert that after um, the underlying problems were fixed. And since this is the end of the year, I'd like to give a group, group hub to the entire community for a wonderful year of projects, community support in Discord and elsewhere, and contributions to CircuitPython, uh, whether it be just helping people or whether it be into terms of code or reviews or anything like that. So thank you very much. Okay, I'll read C. Grover's contribution now. Uh, to Jeff for his insightful RPN calculator guide. It provided me with a needed leg up on one of my current projects. The guide is also an excellent coding style example. Decimal objects are amazingly cool and could help with some other projects. And C. Grover says, reflecting at all of this year's projects and progress, can't thank the community enough for the unselfish and exceptionally positive support to fuel my personal development and growth. Okay, thank you, C. Grover. So Foamy Guy, you're up if you can if you were able to speak now. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, this week, Hug Reports, um, first, a uh, group hug uh, to everyone uh, working on the project and in the in the community. Definitely looking forward to another great year uh, with the project and community. Um, to uh, Dexter Starbird for sharing, um, they've actually shared a, a several different display I.O. examples with uh, some vector shapes and some other things. So they're always posting neat stuff in show and tell uh, and on the Discord. So thank you to them. and. Uh, C. Grover as well shared a, a matrix portal uh, snowman with some nice falling snowflakes and stuff this week, which I thought was really cool. So thank you to them. And then um, to uh, Intel and anyone else that is working on uh, Mu for releasing a uh, new version this week. And okay, that's what I got. Thank you. Thank you. Guy. Okay, uh, Jeff, go ahead. Hello again. I wanted to thank you for the release candidates, plural. Uh, very excited to get so close to version 7.1. And I wanted to thank Foamy Guy for filling in on the Friday streams. I know a lot of people are enjoying those. And uh, maybe a hug report, maybe a blush at uh, C. Grover for the kind remarks about my code. And finally, a hug to everybody who's used and contributed to CircuitPython in 2021. Um, seeing the projects in the newsletter uh, almost every week is a high point, And it's one of the reasons that I keep going with, uh, with the stuff that we're doing together. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, Jerry, would you like to say something? Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, hug this to Scott for uh, in absentia for uh, patiently helping me with getting started on the Broadcom parts. I had a lot of questions, and he always had answers. And then a group hug to everybody, and best wishes for the upcoming 2022. It's got to be better than last year. Okay, thanks, Jerry. Okay, Kathy, you can go ahead. All right, so first up, a hug to you, Dan, for running the meeting for me today. Um, would have been seriously rough without my setup. I'm uh, running mobile on my laptop at the moment. Um, again, a hug report to Foamy Guy for continuing to get through the older PRs. Um, once he came on uh, with a little more time for Adafruit stuff, um, I realized this would be an excellent time to have somebody go through and get those. Um, either merged or closed or whatever it is that is the best option for it. Um, just something that I haven't been able to do. And I'm really excited that it's happening. To Mark Gambler for taking an interest in getting the IS31 going more smoothly in CircuitPython. Uh, to Carter for all of his help throughout the year with guide questions. Uh, I So I this quick story. Started with Adafruit in 2017 with basically no experience. Um, so there's some very fundamental things about electronics that I don't know or understand. And these are things that are sometimes required for guides. And Carter always steps in and carefully ex explains to me what it is that I don't understand and helps me get it to a point that I'm able to explain it to other people, which is really the crucial thing for guides. Um, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, to Kevin at DigiKey for sending me some purple LEDs and some excellent DigiKey swag. Um, I mentioned that I needed one LED and uh, that I couldn't bring myself to make a DigiKey order for one LED. Um, and Kevin uh, got me taken care of, so that was amazing. 
Um, to everyone who has been there for me throughout the last year, I know there's people I'm missing. Um, I can barely remember what I did last week uh, if I didn't have it written down. So I know I've missed some folks, um, but thank you to all of you. It's been a very rough year and uh, I've gone through quite a lot and a lot of folks have stepped up and taken care of things and been there for me and I really appreciate it. And finally, a group hug to all involved in CircuitPython in this community. You make it what it is. Um, without the community, we wouldn't really have CircuitPython. So thank you all for being part of that. I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday or last week, if that's not your thing, and that everyone has a lovely new year. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. I'll, I have several uh, text only entries that I'll read. In fact, all the rest I have to read. So the, first we start with Kmatch, who says, as the days start to get longer, it's a good time of year to count blessings. Just wanted to express my gratitude to Adafruit and the CircuitPython development team and extended CircuitPython library developer and sample code community. While software and hardware sometimes are solitary activities, it's always nice to connect with kind and welcoming folks willing to lend a hand. That makes each of us better and helps us all grow. Many thanks, you all. All right, now uh, Mark Gambler. Uh, Mark, thanks DigiKey for randomly picking me a winner for the a winner for their DigiWish contest, and group hug to everyone. Stay healthy and have a great New Year. All right, and we'll move on to uh, MicroDev now. Group hug to the entire CircuitPython community for awesome projects, contributions, and support throughout the year. Wishing everyone a very happy New Year. And finally, Tetric who hasn't been on Discord all that long, but has been uh, very helpful and has asked a lot of good questions. Uh, thanks to Foamy Guy for all their help with the typing PRs and FRAM library work. Foamy Guy, thanks to Foamy Guy and Paul SKPT for helping me get a quick, quick fix through for an issue in the display text library. Thanks to Jeffler for starting on making a font typing protocol that will make the typing easier for end users to understand. Thanks to Dan H. for always answering my random questions on Discord and GitHub, so I'm never stalled. Thanks to Kathy for checking in about letting me help out with some infrastructure stuff that I'm interested in and helping to make a welcoming community. And a group hug and Happy New Year. All right. So now we'll move on to the status updates section of the meeting. I'll start. Um, last week, I fixed one major bug. Um, <clears throat> The alarm, that wake alarm was not getting set properly when a sleeping program woke up from a fake or real deep sleep. So I fixed that. That was regression that appeared at some point uh, in the 7.0 series. That was the last bug that we considered serious enough to fix for 7.1.0 final. There's still a number of 7xx issues, most of which we would hope to address in versions after 7.1.0. And then last week, um, I released on two release candidates, first uh, 7.1.0 RC.0 and then 7.1.0 RC.1 on December 23rd and on Christmas, respectively. Um, RC.1 was only minor changes. It turns on I2C power by default on the new QDPI ESP, ESP32 S2 board. Uh, Lady Ada worked on that fix. And also I updated the uh, frozen libraries properly, which I hadn't done for RC.0. Uh, we're not sure when we're going to release 7.1.0 final, but I think I'm going to do it tomorrow or Wednesday if there are no showstopper issues. So that would be uh, a nice, uh, relaxing thing to do next week when we won't have so much, this week when we won't have so much else otherwise to do. Okay, now I'll go ahead and read uh, C. Grover's contributions. Um, continuing work on the RPN calculator with a few distractions into retro widget display I.O. internals, food and family, and a wonderful shift to cool, crisp weather. Okay, foamy guy, you can go ahead. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, last week, I worked on the code, uh, and I think we are most of the way there for the uh, Pi Portal version of the Busy Simulator. Uh, and I'll be working on the guide this week to document that project. Um, on Friday, uh, I did stream, and, and we played with some uh, vector I.O. shapes, made some uh, Christmas tree and snowman shapes with vector IO, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I am continuing to work through the old PRs, like Katni mentioned, um, some of the ones that are coming up 
This week probably our HT16K33. I uh, just got some feather wings assembled to test out some PRs with that library. Um, some other stuff I want to take on this week. Um, there's a couple of older PRs or uh, open issues, I should say rather, in the core that are related to display I/O stuff, just implementing different small features here and there. Uh, so I want to try to uh, dig into some of those to get some more practice working inside the core. Uh, and then I am streaming, planning to stream again uh, on Friday night. So if folks are interested in watching something Friday evening, um, I will be doing that. That's what I got. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vomi Guy. Okay. Uh, Jeff, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, last week, it felt like I did a lot of stuff with the CI or GitHub Actions. Uh, it needed to be groomed or kept uh, like a well-kept lawn. Maybe it's topiary sculpture. I don't know. It's one of those things. Um, but uh, besides that, I finished off my lamp project. Uh, I don't know. I guess I showed a previous uh, partially complete version of it on Show and Tell a couple of weeks ago. But uh, anyway, this week I'll be working on a guide for this lamp project. So you can see it when that is out later. Uh, and the latter part of the week I will be out. I don't know exactly when, but you know, I'll kind of trail off. I'll be here today and tomorrow and not on Friday. And in between I'll be like halfway disappeared. Uh, and so happy new year to everybody if I don't talk to you again before then. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Okay, uh, Jerry, go ahead. Um, yeah, so finally, after a lot of um, muddling around and trying things, I, I got my uh, Compute Module 4 I.O. board and, and board configured so that it, it boots now from the network and it can use an SD card um, just for the file system. I still still haven't figured out how or why I can't get it to boot from the USB ports on the um, I.O. board, but that, that'll come, maybe. Maybe not. It's it's just not clear that it it can do it. Um, and then uh, so I've been playing around with it with the the, the different Broadcom boards, the Pi Four build. Um, it does boot from the USB just fine, and then it now also can use the SD card for its file system, and that's that's working nicely. Um, so now my big goal is to remind myself and relearn how to use GDB effectively, and actually try and try and be helpful with this project at some point. Um, and I spent a lot of time on some non-circuit Python projects, but mostly it was in response to monitoring the forums and Discord and seeing seeing somebody ask something and you know thinking, well, gee, I, I, I think I know how to do that or I've done that, and digging out the old hardware to do it. And most of the times the response was, well, it works for me, which isn't always helpful to the person who it's not working for, but at least it can, you know, hopefully gave them hope that it should work. Uh, and there's nothing inherently wrong with their with their connections, um, but in doing so, I, I learned a lot and relearned a lot. And so I, I'm finding that you know by monitoring the forums and discords is a wonderful place to to just pick up lots of ideas and try things. And and um, it's, I find it a really great way to learn stuff. And then I got some of the QDP ESP32 S2 boards today, and boy, they, they're just really nice. Um, it's just so easy to stick a sensor on the stem up port and it works. Um, really nice little package. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? I interrupted you, maybe. No. Oh, okay, all right, uh, Cadby, go ahead. All right, so last week was a short, short week for me. I got the absolute basic pages done for the QDPI ESP32 S2 guide. Um, that is the, um, overview, the pinouts page, and the downloads resources page. And that was made live um, simply because folks were asking questions, um, but I didn't get to the rest of it. Uh, it sounds like Lamora may actually add some of the CircuitPython stuff to it and the Arduino stuff to it soon. Um, otherwise, I will be picking that up next Monday. Other than that, um, uh, it was a bonkers week. Um, so I did nothing else for work. And then this week, nothing. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I won't be working this week. I, I attended meetings today uh, simply to stay in the loop. Um, and then I will be picking everything that I've got on my list back up uh, next week. So you will hear about my whole list of things to do on Monday the 3rd. So have a, have a wonderful new year, everyone. All right. Thank you, Kathy. And have a great time doing nothing, which is maybe some of we all should aspire to do that sometimes. 
Okay, and I'll read the last two entries here. Um, Mark Gambler writes, one more test I want to run on the IS31 FL3741 speed. That's uh, the special display uh, like that's used in the um, LED glasses, that controller, and need to write a summary of how it all works together. May be doing this after the new year. And Mark says they're getting a booster shot tomorrow. All right. Okay, and then finally, Tectric says, after the holidays, more typing PRs, going for some more challenging libraries, then add a way for seven segment displays to marquee and or print a variety of characters beyond setting segments individually. That sounds very interesting. And getting work, work on getting tap detection working on the LSM 6DS library. All right, that's it for status reports. Um, we don't have anything in the weeds. Is there anything that somebody thinks thought of at the last minute that they'd like to add here? Uh, no, but thank you for doing the release. Oh, you're welcome. All right. And I think that wraps up this meeting. We're going to have another meeting at the same time uh, next, next week. That will also be right after a holiday weekend, so it may also be lightly attended. But uh, if you're around, feel free to show up. Um, and we can hear about uh, whatever what what has been happening since last week. Hopefully, you hear about seven point one point zero point uh, final. If not, you'll hear about bug fixes in seven point one point zero. So uh, thanks thanks a lot, everybody, and I will stop recording now.